going on, guys? You're sitting at home on the couch doing nothing? That's why you're gonna subscribe to Black is the New Rich, so you can learn something, educate your family, educate your friends, do it all. Black is the New Rich, peace. I heard that you've done almost a million dollars in grants. Is that true? Yes, <laughs> yes it is. Um, I would say at this point, my success rate is very impressive. Welcome back, episode 21 of the Black is the New Rich podcast. Today we got a very special guest because this is a guest that you guys picked. I went to go search for a grant writer because I did a poll in my Instagram story and a lot of people were coming to me and be like, hey, I need to know on, I need to know how to write grants. So you know what? I went to go search for the expert and here she is, but I'm going to let her introduce herself. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. My name is Joel Cabisoso. I am a founder of a nonprofit organization called Sisters in Sync. But on my spare time, I also write grants and work as a campaign officer. Oh. Nice, nice. So I heard that you've done almost a million dollars in grants. Is that true? Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, I would say at this point, my success rate is very impressive for having been in the game, I would say, just under two and a half years. Oh, wow. So, yeah, we're I can't wait to finally reach like above a million. So we'll see. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to get into what you're doing now, but I just want to ask um, your journey to becoming a grant writer. And I just want to know the startup and how that started for you. So um, becoming a grant writer was actually just like on accident. It was one of those things where you had no choice because I had an idea to start an organization, but I got to a point after two and a half years of just like using my own money to fund the organization, I was like, there has to be an easier way. Like there's just, there's no way that my little paycheck is gonna sustain, you know, running an organization and also paying the bills. Um, but I've always been a writer. Like I really thrived in university when it came to like writing essay papers and conducting research. So when I decided to do my first grant two and a half years ago, I didn't know what to expect. Uh, in my mind, I was just like, okay, you need money and you need someone to believe in your vision, pretty much. Like, how can you get this person to believe in your vision? So I just literally started to write. And I'm one of those people, I write exactly how I speak. So I, that's my process. Like, I'll write how I speak and then I'll go back and kind of change it into more of a written format. And also that key component is like researching, right? So when you're applying for a grant, like, to me, it's so important that my 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 proposal makes sense with what's happening in the world. So I just kind of put myself out there. I started writing and researching, submitted my first grant two and a half years ago. And like when I tell you it was my first ever, I had never done anything like that before. I just took a chance on myself. And the first one that I wrote, I got it. Yeah, and so I was like, okay. So I really just applied my my passion for writing and research and just figured out how I can use it to write proposals and get people to give me money. Wow. <laughs> amazing, amazing. So before you got this grant money, what are some of the challenges that you faced with your business? Because obviously we all need funds as a business. What are some of the challenges that you face specifically? And especially what are the, some of the challenges that you could face as a nonprofit as well? Mm -hmm. That's a really good question because there are a lot of challenges. Like, you know, sometimes on the outside looking in, it's great, the money's coming in, but to get to that point is exhausting. And for me, um, you know, operating a nonprofit in a community where there's so many nonprofits, especially well-established ones, right? You're competing with organizations that have been around for like 50 years, 100 years, and who are pretty much the go-to organizations that funders give money to. And here you are with a team of two people, you know, with just an idea, like you don't even have systems in place. You don't have um, operations to go off of and or even finances to show them that like you're capable of managing that money. So it was definitely challenging because it felt like 
people won't pay you any mind because of the fact that there's no credibility to you or there's no history to kind of back up why you're asking for $300,000 or why you're asking for $50,000. So I think the challenge is really just like seeing how many other organizations like myself are out there, what they're doing, and knowing that there's a potential that I may not be founded, uh, sorry, yeah, funded, not necessarily because my idea isn't good, but because people like to stick with what they know, right? And I think it would be even the same thing in business. Sometimes we're reluctant to buy something from a new company or support a new business because, well, their prices might be too expensive or the quality, I'm not too sure, so you just stick with what you know and you will find that in this grant world that's how it tends to be they won't say it but yeah one of the things I always do is like I research who's been funded and you'll see that like the same names come up right so when when it's things like that I just feel more motivated to kind of keep writing and there are times where like I don't get grant I mean I there's a lot of grants that I didn't get you know but at the same time it shouldn't derail you from actually continuing to submit them even if you know you're going up against like a YWCA or like a Nike like those bigger organizations okay wow makes sense so I've done a little bit of research on grants and how to get them, but honestly, it gets so overwhelming for me because there's so much information out there. I don't know which is uh, credible, um, which because I, I actually like a month ago I was um, on allegedly a grant site that was like is listing all these grants and then but then to like no more information, I had to like sign up for their website, you know, so. Tell me, what is the importance of a grant writer? (laughs) This episode is sponsored by Black is the New Rich Clothing. Aren't you tired of brands taking your cool and not giving back? Rich in spirit, rich in body, rich in wealth. Breathe it, live it, wear it. Black is the New Rich. There's a lot of important reasons why you should get a grant writer. Number one is knowing that you will never have to pay a fee to apply for a grant. That's like, I would say the number one red flag. If you get on a website and it's telling you, pay this amount so that you can have access to this grant application, abort mission. (laughs) Like get off that website as soon as you can. But I think when people don't have the knowledge, they won't know that, right? They'll think, oh, this page looks credible. There is a bunch of reviews on there. Maybe I do have to apply, but that's, the first thing I'll say is like, you will never have to pay to apply for a grant. And the good thing about having a grant writer is they do the bulk of the work for you. Like really for me, my process is I'll have a brainstorming session so I can understand a little bit more of the vision, you know, what it is that your organization or your business does and where you're trying to go and why you think that this specific grant works for you. So sometimes clients come to me with the grant that they already want to apply for. So I don't have to go and like research to find grants that match the organization. But for those who may not know where to start, I tend to provide them with options, right? So I'll say, okay, based off of, you know, what you've said your organization is and what you want to do, this might be a better grant for you. I'll go through what the requirements requirements are because again you have to make sure that you're eligible the, the worst is and it's happened to me personally <laughs> you write a whole grant and you do the whole thing and only to come find out that like you missed that little piece where you're not eligible <laughs> and it's like oh great I just spent you know a whole week writing this and I can't even submit it right so you like I always encourage people if you're not going to do it at least allow a grant writer to really go through like the eligibility criteria for you to make sure that you actually fit because sometimes what I find is people try to make themselves fit in a grant stream and it's like uh, yeah it doesn't really work so you always want to make sure that it kind of aligns with what it is that you want to do um, and grant writers are great for that right we do the research for you as well and I always say like 
one of the great things to do is always bring it back to like facts mm-hmm. you know like i i my organization has a goal of supporting women who've experienced various trauma so sexual trauma any type of um anything that kind of changes the way they perceive themselves in their life and i never want to pitch or propose a program without fact checking right i want to make sure that if in my grant i'm saying 15 percent of girls will experience sexual assault in their lives well i want to make sure that that's factual you know what i mean and i want to make sure that in my community i can grab the numbers and i can grab the organization and i can really capture the important information where the person reviewing the grant will say oh, okay this is true or this is completely made up now this whole application is incredible mm-hmm. so with the grant writer that's what we do right we'll go in and we'll really do the research and I like to walk my clients through the process I don't ever want it to be like a surprise and you find out that I put in things that aren't even true and stuff like that so I always make sure that we have the brainstorming session I do the research, I draft up the first draft, and then allow them the opportunity to review, to ask any questions, and then from there I go and like finalize whatever the proposal is and then return it to the client so they can submit it. Okay, okay, dope. So that is the importance of your job. Yeah. So uh, you mentioned earlier that um, sometimes clients come to you with grants um, asking you if they can, um, if this is suitable for their needs. Mm How do we find our grants? Like, where are we looking? Or are you just looking for the grants? So you can find grants practically everywhere. Literally, even, like, places you wouldn't even imagine. Like, some um, grocery companies provide grants, right? And you would never know because sometimes we don't take the time to actually, like, explore websites for more than just what we're coming to look for. And I found that for me, like when I just take the time, I encounter so many different things, but I would say there really isn't one place necessarily, but places that I would recommend where you could start is government websites, right? So um, you can get funding from the Canadian government. So if you just go on like Canada.com, CA.com, one of those. <laughs> um, they actually have like a section where it's like funding, and you can go on that, and there's funding for everything literally everything. The federal government will fund practically anything and that's the beauty of it right if you're an arts person there's a grant for that if you are like um an organization or a business that like trains individuals for job readiness there's funding for that so really just paying attention to your field and the different websites so um if you are someone who what else like like even td right they offer what is called like sponsorships right so you could even go on the td website or rbc or scotia bank and they have sponsorships but they also have grant streams mm-hmm. Right. So, you know, the bank isn't just to pay your bills. They also <laughs> they also do have grant opportunities like um, Desjardins. They have the oh, I don't know the name, but it's like F- Future of Good or something like that. I'll probably send it to you so you can like insert it. But they have a grant for entrepreneurs. You get ten thousand dollars to support your business and to whatever it is that you need between ten and twenty thousand. So really just like taking the time to explore looking at the companies that you use every single day is also a really good way to find out what the grant opportunities are but getting on mailing list like that is one thing that I found to be like very beneficial is just literally subscribing because you don't know what will come up on your your inbox right and also if you're a part of like on Facebook I'm a part of the black Toronto community or black yeah and that that page has honestly been the best page for me personally I find so many resources on that website and there's even a gentleman there that regularly post upcoming grants right so you just have to really be plugged in to every source um, that you can online and you'll find eventually the grants will just start coming to you as weird as it sounds but like it'll literally start coming you won't even have to go looking and someone will send you a link and say oh I think this will be good for you or it'll just come in your inbox yeah okay (laughs) okay dope so 
hypothetically speaking, right. let's say there is a grant for a million dollars out there for podcasters, right? What are the chances of me getting the whole thing if I apply? Like, or do, like, am I guaranteed getting the whole thing? How does that work? So there's never a guarantee that you're going to get the amount that you ask for. Mm -hmm. I rarely ever get the amount that I ask for. Actually, I'm shocked when I get it. <laughs> no, honestly, I'm very shocked when I get the amount that I ask for because what my strategy is, and it may not work for everybody else, but I always ask for what they say the max is because the worst thing that can happen is you give me less right whereas i find if i'm asking for less i could only potentially get lesser they're, you know they're not going to give you more if you're asking for less so i always just shoot my shot i always tell myself again that's the worst that can happen they can refuse me or i can get less right so um but to answer your question there's never a guarantee i wouldn't even say it's 50 50 honestly yeah i i that would be very like optimistic <laughs> to say that yeah, you have a 50% chance of getting um, the full amount, but it is not a bad strategy. If you truly believe in what it is that you're writing about and what you want to do, go for it. Okay. Put the full amount. Like my last clients, I told them, like, just put the full amount. Mm -hmm. And when they told me, they were like, wow, they actually gave me the full amount. I was like, even I was shocked. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, wow, you know? Yeah. But um, yeah, there, there's there's no guarantee, but still try it. Okay. You, you just never know. You'll surprise yourself. Okay, dope, dope. So with the grant application process, how long does the process take and how long can people expect maybe a yes or a no? Mm -hmm. So number one, I mean, as much as I say, you can find a lot of funding opportunities on the government's page. Also, don't trust them when they tell you a certain timeline because I got a grant. So I applied for a grant, let's say November 2020. I received that grant in January 2020. Too. <laughs> yeah, and we were supposed to find out um, what's after 2020. We were supposed to find out like the March of 2021. Oh, wow. Yeah. So one of the things is you will be waiting like a long time. And that's not just with the government. That's with any funding source. Right. There tends to be more applications than funding available. And that takes time because if they're doing if they're want, they want to be fair, they have to review everybody's um, application, make decisions, sometimes do a double review and stuff like that. So I would say in terms of um, how long it'll take for you to get a decision that varies they tend to say they like when you are applying they will say decisions will be made early april or may or something like that but just expect delays expect to receive an email to tell you four times that <laughs> they're behind and then when it comes to the actual writing process i think that depends on what your individual process is as a grant writer so for me like i said i always do a consultation and a brainstorming session try to understand and get ideas and then depending on what it is i'll conduct some research right so if again your you, your project is about mental health in the black community well i want to understand what that fully means and if i'm able to pull out some facts or if i'm able to really kind of like redirect your plan I do the research and then after that then I start to do my first draft and after the first draft I provide it to the client for them to review as I start working on the budget because the budget is very important um yes make sure <laughs> you take the time to work on your budget seriously because I've actually didn't get a grant because my budget wasn't properly explained and there are some funders who allow you the opportunity to contact them and get feedback and i'm like this is a beautiful application and so we walked through it and she was like yeah like there were a few things in your budget that just wasn't clear so taking the time to really develop a budget because it's not just putting numbers on an excel sheet and saying well i need fifty thousand for salary i need 24 rent and stuff like that like you actually have to explain what you're going to do with it mm -hmm. and your budget has to match your actual written proposal mm -hmm. so if you're saying you want to host five workshops but then in your budget there's only enough for two they're going to want to know where are the other three mm -hmm. right how are you going to reach five if you're only asking 
enough for three uh, for two workshops so then once that's done once they're done reviewing and they give me their feedback i provide them with their budget so that they could review the budget as i now work on cleaning up that first draft and then i get the budget back if there's any changes i make them if not then i work on finalizing it so how many steps is that i don't know maybe like four or five steps Mm -hmm. for me personally Mm -hmm. but there's some people who they can do that in a day right into yeah i i when i first first started i got a grant writer to help me with something and she was like yeah it can take me 10 hours i said 10 hours (laughs) okay but because i come from like a writing background i'm someone that likes to like fact check and i like to make sure you know my words make sense and and you're also working a lot of times with like um, word limits Mm -hmm. so imagine trying to pitch your project and you only have like 200 word, uh, 200 words or characters, 200 words, and you're like, but it takes 400 to explain what I want to do, right? Mm-hmm. So it's really making sure that like you're condensing things to me because you can be refused by being over one or two words, and sometimes it even stops you from adding yeah. any more words. Yeah. So being mindful of that, and to me, that's all a part of my process. So I would say on average, depending again on... Um, the length of the grant it can take me maybe three days Mm -hmm. and if you have a budget that requires let's say five years well that could take me a little bit longer because sometimes you know you can't just copy and paste because each year it may differ right and also depending on when the fiscal year starts you may start in april but then the next year it's like a september type of thing you know what i mean so kind of being mindful of those type of things but uh generally in a week i'll be done yeah Okay. okay so i have a question does it make sense um can you write more than one grant for someone at once and then wait and what are i know you answered a a little bit but what are the components of a good proposal you can write as many grants as you want you can submit as many grants as you please not necessarily for like the one funding stream um generally they say like only one proposal um, or application per organization but there are others um like one that i recently applied for that where like you can apply as much as you'd like, but it has to be different projects, right? And that in itself takes a lot of time. And you want to make sure that you're proposing your strongest project. Like the last thing you want to do is for the sake of, oh, I have, you know, three chances, you submit three applications, but they're all very mediocre or they're not, (laughs) you know, they're not good. Now you've just played yourself because you could have submitted one really strong proposal and gotten it and now you've submitted three and you don't get a single thing Mm -hmm. right so you have to pay attention to like the again the requirements some will say you can submit multiple for the one funding and others will be very specific that it's limited and you can only provide one but um yeah like they're right now actually my latest clients i'm working on four grants for them yeah so yeah yeah so you can again you can apply and they're all from different places right so there's one that's with this organization another one there so you can apply for whatever is available as long as you meet the criteria as long as you know that if they're asking for you to be incorporated well that you're incorporated Mm -hmm. that if you have financial statements that's one thing too make sure that if it's asking for financial statements, that you have financial statements. Otherwise, honestly, you've just wasted your time writing an application, been there. (laughs) You know, so it's important like to always just double check, even triple check what the requirements are before you begin an application because you don't want to waste your time Mm -hmm. and you don't want to disqualify yourself by submitting something and you've worked so hard on it but you've missed a document you know and there's some funders who are nice they'll give you the opportunity to send things back like that happened in my case i forgot to fill out a section Mm -hmm. and it was very specific they were like if you don't incomplete applications will not be considered Mm -hmm. so when they messaged me back and they're like hey we didn't get something um here it is can you fill it out and send it for us i was like wow 
I, I listen, I didn't even bat an eye. I was already filling it out and I had sent it to them like right away because I'm like, this is interesting. Like this has never happened. And then I went on to get the grant, you know? So there's some, some that are nice like that and others you'll get that. Yeah. Like go away from here. Like, so, you know, stuff like that. So, um, yeah, those are things that you want to pay attention to, but to answer your question, yes, you can apply for multiple at the same time and I can write multiple. The only thing would be being mindful of like the deadlines, right? You don't want to overwhelm yourself with grants that are like back to back Mm -hmm. unless you're able to have like a body Mm -hmm. that you just kind of change a little bit depending on the grant, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So after a while, like I found that I have like my one main application that has all the information necessary and I've gotten a chance to study what they ask. So I know like, okay, they tend to ask for this or they tend to ask for that. And then from there, it makes it easier to just literally copy paste and edit a little bit of things because you already have the body of what it is that you want to do. You just now have to tailor it to the questions of that specific grant. Okay. Yes. And now process, right? Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, no, not process. I think you said no, what makes um, a good grant. What makes a good grant? Um, the executive summary. So generally it will be like the about your organization or st- about the project, sorry. That is what opens the floor. If I'm able to just read about what your project is, and like I said, sometimes they'll say, tell us about your project in 150 words. So it's that elevator pitch or that initial pitch Mm -hmm. that you have to try to say, how can I take this big idea and put it into 150 words? Yeah, (laughs) yeah, It trust me, it's very challenging. And sometimes it'll take me just like a day or two just trying to, yeah, trying to make it into 150 words, right? So that generally is what I would say is like the most important part. And then going on um, to how you answer the questions. So it's important to make sure you pay attention to how they're asking it because you will find that sometimes they ask you practically the same question. And it's your job to figure out how you're going to answer it, but differently. Mm -hmm. And how you're gonna make sure that you're actually including what they're asking for. Like, again, with the grant that um, I said that, you know, I had applied and they're like, your budget killed your whole application. Um, There was a section where they asked, how do you intend to include youth in your project? I said, well, we're gonna bring them to workshops. But that doesn't necessarily, let them know how we're going to be including them. Mm -hmm. And so an answer like that would be, well, we're going to invite them throughout the whole process of designing the program, implementing it, as well as having feedback with them. So that shows them that you're not the only one making decisions about this project, but you're actually involving the youth at every stage of it so that it's truly for the youth by the youth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, you know, really, again, paying attention. And I would say your work plan. So depending on the funders, again, um, they want to see how you intend on spending the money you're asking for for the amount of time that you're asking for. Mm -hmm. So if you're asking for 300,000 over three years, well, how do you plan on spending it? Mm -hmm. How are you going to begin and how are you going to conclude? So making sure, again, that that budget matches your work plan, which matches your actual written application. Mm -hmm. So if you have those three things so like your executive summary paying attention to the questions and your work plan that generally is what will ensure that your application is strong Mm -hmm. and utilizing their question and answer time I am one of those I will send you an email I do not I'll ask you this I literally I will ask the same question just to make sure i'll be like okay so this question says this 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 is this what it means yes i'm like okay so you're sure that like i have no problem asking because again if a client trusts me enough to write this grant for them well i want to make sure that i fully understand what's being asked Mm -hmm. because the worst thing is you pay someone only for them to disadvantage you you know so yeah utilizing those inboxes where you can ask the question is also very important because that sets you up to kind of 
a little bit getting in the minds of who's going to be evaluating and what they're looking for. Okay. Okay. Dope. So let's say um, I apply for a grant and I got a million dollars. So this million dollars is not for me to buy cars, jewelry, chains, and all that stuff, right? So how do we, how does, um, how do we show, uh, I guess, proof of where we're spending the money and for the people thinking that, hey, I'm gonna get the grant money and buy all that stuff, what do you, what word do you have for them? Well, the first thing, if you could just take that money, I would be in a safari in South Africa right now, <laughs> okay? I would not be here. I would have taken all that money and gone, but life just doesn't work like that. You know, it, unfortunately, it's just not how this grant game works. Um, and so for accountability piece, that's why you have that budget that you provide, right? Because again, they wanna see how you're gonna spend the money. You're not just saying, I need $300,000 to fund my business okay, well, what are you gonna do with that $300,000? And then from there, you have to report, mm -hmm. right? So with grants, there are, um, there are also different types of grants. There are some that you have to pay back. So those could be like contributions. Wait, no. No, no, no. Contributions would be like, they'll give you a certain amount, but you have to find the rest. Okay. Yeah, and then there's some that you have to pay back so which basically is like a loan and then there's grants that are non-repayable so those ones are the ones that you want because then in that case like you get the full like you don't have to pay it back but you have to report on it so depending again um, you'll have two stages where you report you'll have the interim report which is the halfway point of your project and then you have the final report and you always have to make sure that you keep your receipts keep your receipts if if you're making an expense on your company card or you know the the organization's account it's important to keep your receipts because funders will come back and you'll find when you're signing your contract that they will tell you keep a record of everything for three years keep a record of everything for six years because you can get randomly audited and I got randomly audited, <laughs> you know, and it was good because, again, like, I'm not trying to cause no problem. I want them to continue to fund me. So I was in the place where everything they asked, we were able to provide and we were able to let them know. But you just you just never know. Right. So you want to make sure for your accountability and the trust also. Right. You again, you want to be able to submit applications for these people again. And you don't want to be on the no no apply list, you know, where they ban you from applying and stuff like that. So you always have a report and that report is a written piece. So again, they'll ask you what your outcomes are, where your inputs, you know, your um, how you intend on measuring success, all that kind of stuff and where you're at. And then when you conclude, they ask for an evaluation and also um, will ask you like, a cash flow sheet okay. so you have to tell them how you s intend on spending per quarter mm -hmm. for some grantors though they'll, they'll want to know like per quarter how much are you going to be spending or per year how much are you going to be spending and then you also have to show them so for this category we said we'd be paying 50,000 in salary we've only paid $45,000 mm -hmm. well you got to give that 5000 back if you don't end up spending it by the time you have your final report, right? Mm -hmm. And then um, other um, funders are also will allow you like a certain percentage to change a category. Mm -hmm. So if, for example, you said you want 50000 for salary, mm -hmm. but then you only ask for 10000 for project equipment and you're finding that you need to add an extra amount well they'll allow you like 25 percent that you can move into any category without explaining but the minute you need to go over that exactly you'll have to maybe reach out to your project manager and ask them like hey you know so we realized we miscalculated and we actually need to move some money from this category to this do we have permission they'll review it and they'll let you know but to avoid i would say any issues always stay in contact with your your program manager okay. yeah because if you have any questions you can just go directly to them mm -hmm. especially budget wise mm -hmm. because at the end of the day like 
yes, they're looking at if you're going to do your project, but they also want to know that they're not funding your lifestyle, Mm -hmm. that you don't get to go on a safari (laughs) or buy a house or buy a new car Mm -hmm. off of the government's money when there's other organization who would who could use it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Dope. So uh, this may be an obvious question, but for your um, personal businesses, how has grants changed your business's life? Mm. Yeah, that's a really good question. (laughs) That's a good question. And I think I speak for a lot of entrepreneurs when I say like in the beginning, you always, always, I mean, unless your dad is rich or your mom is rich, but you always end up having to spend out of pocket, Mm -hmm. right? And unless you're making enough where it's not a problem, hey, go ahead, right? That's that's great. But for a lot of us, like, you don't want to be sacrificing a meal for the sake of funding your business. Mm -hmm. And I am a firm believer in, like, I do not want to have a struggle story. You know what I mean? A lot of people, I think, enjoy or they romanticize. I used to sleep in my car so I can get my... I don't want that. I want to sleep on my queen-size bed while still having money in my account, but also knowing that I can fund my business. So it was very... um, It was very challenging, you know, starting up and feeling like, is this even a good idea? Are people going to be receptive to it? But we've gotten to a point where... At least for me, you know, I'm an award winning founder now. <laughs> you know? No, but you know, we've gotten to a point where I've been able to build credibility with my organization. I've been able to actually support my community, develop programmings that actually help. But of course, as we grow each year, there's more opportunities. And so, with the funding that we've been able to get, like, I'm able to create jobs. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, at one point, we had a program that supplied groceries for the community, and I was able to 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 hire elderly women in the community to assist us with like the packaging. And these are people who are retired, who you know are looking for something to do. And here I am, just kind of like, okay, I need help doing this, and they enjoyed it. So knowing that. I'm at a place that that's what I can do now is, you know, even if it's for a short period of time, Mm -hmm. it goes a long way. And so that's what, um, you know, funding has really done for us. And it's allowed us to, again, really broaden our scope of services. Mm -hmm. And it's challenging us to keep kind of like applying for more. Yeah. And also developing our capacity. Like I said, I love research. Mm -hmm. So now we've managed to hire someone in the position to actually conduct research so that we can provide um so we can develop policies and provide suggestions to the government on how to deal with women who've experienced violence right so that's what funding has been able to do for us yeah first of all congratulations that's super (laughs) that's super dope and i did notice that you slipped that award-winning um piece in there and i want you to talk about it's the ngo award right ngo well, there's different ones. Okay, yeah. can you explain that for me, please? Yeah, so I mean, when your community sees what you're doing and you're coming from a genuine place and you're really about your business, like my family knows I'm about my business, like don't play with me in my business. <laughs> you know, do not play with me in my business. And I'm very passionate about what it is that I do. Like I feel like I've, you know how some people say, I've never, I didn't think I would be in this position. Like. I've, I always knew I would be in this type of position, you know, some type of position where I can use my skills to help other people, whether it's through grant writing or even consulting with organizations, because I offer that too. You know, I help people understand, like, how can you break into the nonprofit world? What do you need? What is the strategy that you need to have? So in doing just that and being able to join different panels and I'm like a no strings attached person. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't, I don't mind giving resources for free because like there's so much room for everybody. Yeah. And I realized that I'm like, I can't even compete with you because you might get something that I, that just isn't for me. It isn't my time. Mm -hmm. And one of the first people that I helped to write a grant, they got more than I did. Mm -hmm. 
And I was so happy for them. You know what I mean? And then from there on, when she saw an opportunity, she called me. When I saw an opportunity. And it got to a point where now we're like, we just recently were nominated for the L'Oreal Paris Women of Worth Award. And when I got that, my first thought went to her. I'm like, oh, I should have nominated her. I'm so sad. And then I call her to let her know of the good news. Like, hey, I was nominated. Like, I'm so happy, you know, my organization is getting $10,000 and she was so happy for me. And I'm like, I I wish you were getting this too. I kid you not, two days later, she's like, girl, I was nominated too. I got the, and we were on the phone just screaming. You know what I mean? And so for me, it's like when you're able to help people and you have that genuine connection and you have friendships that are being built, like how could you not want to, you know, continue to help them? And people see that kind of stuff and you don't have to fake it either. It's not something where I'm like, let's strategize how I can make people like me. Like, I don't care if you like me or not. I just want to be as true to myself as possible so yeah so I think in the last three years honestly I've gotten just under 10 awards yeah and I'm actually there's one on the 16th of June (laughs) that I'm gonna be going to accept and um and they're really great opportunities because they open more and more doors right it allows people to want to partner up with our organization or even people to refer me as a grant writer and I remember at one point I was like and my friend Elfie like she was on your show and she's always like you need to get more like more people you need to like show your business out there I'm like but I'm shy you know like but now I'm at a point where I'm like okay I don't even advertise myself none of the clients that I've gotten was because I posted something it's generally people referring them back to me and you know really believing like she's really good and one thing too is like I don't determine if you get the grant or not right I can only assist you and then the rest is up to whoever is evaluating so don't be mad at me if you don't get it (laughs) you know but yeah so just just really being true to myself and just like knowing that everything is bigger than me like I don't like I live a great life in terms of like my job pays me well I get to travel I get to do whatever I want so everything else is is for a greater purpose so I try not to look at other people as competition I try not to compare myself too much I try not to also like feel down when other people are doing better because I'm a firm believer in when it's your time it's your time you know the last three years it's been my time but who knows maybe this is the last year (laughs) you know what I mean maybe this is the last award I'm accepting and then after that it's a dry season, but that doesn't take away from the fact that like I'll be cheering on whoever is coming up next type of stuff. Yeah. Well, I only I think that you can only win with that type of attitude. Right. And another thing I want to say is thank you for coming on the show because now you are going to be super public because you are <laughs> mentioning that people are uh, only they come to you by referral base and it's kind of under the table kind of thing or not under the table but kind of uh, just word of mouth. Right. This is so legal yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, sorry. So now that you know when this episode comes out, you'll be super public, and I'm happy for you. I'm happy that uh, for the reception that you'll get because I know you'll get it so here's two questions I'm gonna ask and I ask everybody on the show and the first question is what is the best advice that you've gotten and what is the worst advice you've gotten and you do not have to say any names okay so I won't call you out now okay. <laughs> um, the best advice that I ever got was keep talking I, I know it sounds like kind of weird like I, I, I'm a chatty person for the most part, especially when I'm like passionate about something, I could go on. And I remember I did a campaign um, four years ago and it was um, a producer and I would say the director because she was directing the whole campaign. And they were just like, as I was you know, telling my story and stuff, and she's like, you know, you could be on a TED talk. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I, don't, I think I was like 21 at the time, very insecure, like, what me she's like no you have a way of talking Mm -hmm. and you have a way of telling stories just keep talking Mm -hmm. and so ever since then I've just kept talking but I've also taken that and transferred it into the grant writing right because writing is a form of speaking Mm -hmm. it's a form of allowing your your thoughts to kind of you know run loose and to be what it is that you really want to say 
So I would say that that's the best one. That's what's allowed me to be on your podcast. Um, It's allowed me to be on different panels. It's allowed me to lead workshops and really just kind of utilize that one skill. And I like to show off my English because it's not my first language, you know. So, um, yeah. So Keep Talking was probably the best one that I've ever gotten. Now I'm just waiting for that TED Talk. But um, and the worst advice I got was attach yourself to a bigger organization. So um, it was in 2020. um, A group of girls and I were selected to go to New York for the UN. Um, There was a conference happening. And so COVID ended up happening though, so we didn't end up going, and instead we went to Ottawa at the parliament. Mm -hmm. And there was a bunch of different organizations and young girls and women from across Canada who were all supposed to go to the UN conference, but were brought to this, um, this youth conference instead. And majority of us, especially the black girls, we all had our own organizations, right? We were all founders. We were all trying to understand, like, how can we continue to be at these tables? How can we continue to, um, really just like allow ourselves to amplify our voices and our experiences? And my friend ended up asking, um, one of the senators that was hosting the thing and she said you know what can we do to continue to have the impact and to to receive funding and she basically said to us attach yourself to a bigger organization it will be difficult for you to break through it will be difficult for you to get the funding and the credibility you're better off just attaching yourself to a more established organization and we were probably like I don't know, seven black girls Mm -hmm. and like six of us came together. Mm -hmm. And so we're looking at each other like, oh, I know she's lying. Like, you know, like we were really pissed. And that honestly stuck with me. And that really pissed me off because it just shows either one, they think we're a threat. You know, they think that we may, yeah, we're a competition that we may come in and take over, which, hey, we may just, but to, to be so public and open with that advice and bold yes and they went on to explain how you know their son had an organization and um, a lot of organization are like trust fund organizations so you have parents or you know people you're well connected that could provide you with the funding that you need and here we are struggling to get funding and you know it felt like they were kind of like waving that in our face basically telling us that like you can't be anything unless you attach yourself and to be honest these bigger organizations that they want us to attach to are usually white-led organization white serving organizations so that was like the worst advice like honestly till this day i think about it <laughs> like how dare you say that to me and then you know to make matters worse like And this is why it's so important for like black entrepreneurs to really go in spaces that they have no business in to really like just force yourself. I've been in rooms where I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing here, but I'm going to make my presence known. I'm going to make sure that they see me and they feel me, too. You know, I don't want to say anything. I just want them to be like, how did this little how is she in here? Why is she in here? That's how I want them to feel. And even in that moment, you know, after they give us that advice, we then have this book that they've published a bunch of different organization and each section or each chapter had something on women of women in jail or women immigrant women or different type of women but there was no section on black women there was no study conducted on black women and so i was like this is strange because there's black women here and no one's talking about it no representation in this book which was you know has high organizations backing this and so i had asked i said okay so aside from that very mean advice that you gave us but i'm looking at a document and there's no experiences of black women in here they said oh we had a hard time finding a black organization to contribute I'm like, are you sure? Because there are plenty PhD students. There are plenty, you know, organizations that could actually provide that information. Did you look or was there just no one that could do it? I'm like, oh, you know, it also has to do with funding. A lot of black organizations aren't well funded, so they can't really contribute the research. But we found somebody, but it, it was at the last minute, so they didn't make it in the book. 
Right. Yeah. So then I asked, I said, okay, well, once that research is available, will the book be amended mm -hmm. to include that? No, but you can find it on our website. I said, okay, will we be notified? Nope, just check periodically. So not only are you telling us that we can't make it on our own, but now our voices are completely erased and we're supposed to be at a conference that talks about and that reviews an agreement to support all women, mm -hmm. you know? So experiences like that for me is what motivates me to like, do my best to help organizations get funding and to even just for myself. And I'm at a point where I'm like, I just want to help people get the funding. Like, I want to see just bare black people. You know what I mean? Talking about they've received one million, they've received X amount because for so long, we are just kind of pushed to the side. And you would think in 2022, that's not the case, but it really is. And for all the organizations back in 2020 who said they were hearing us and listening and learning and all that beautiful beautiful language that they had well they're no longer listening yeah. you know they're no longer funding us they're no longer supporting so we have to find a way to go out and get it ourselves and that's why again working collaboratively with one another and just going with your ideas mm -hmm. like no matter how small it is how insignificant you think it might be there is funding available for you and don't be shy call me Jeez. <laughs> well i'm i'm very happy that you didn't let your worst advice get to your head because mm -hmm. sometimes you know when we're coming up we hear a lot of things and a lot of information and some uh, uh, advice can throw us off right. and i'm happy that you recognize that early and you went against it and you're now you're saying you know what i'm gonna push for more of us right. to be in these type of positions. So congratulate yourself for that. That's super dope. Um, my next question that I ask everybody, because I like we like to make predictions on the show. Okay. So in five years from now, I want to play this back. Oh, okay. So where do you see yourself in five years? Ooh, world domination. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, um oh, in 5 years, you know, I see my organization growing beyond just the city of Hamilton. Mm -hmm. Um I really see ourselves like I'm from the Democratic Republic of Congo. Mm -hmm. And there are just so many issues that I'd love to touch upon in terms of just supporting women and even just outside of my nonprofit, like I have a degree in family studies. So I really studied like family policies and laws and and just really understanding how the family unit itself functions and thrives in society. So for me, I would really, really like, it would be a dream to be able to open up my organization abroad in different countries and to really provide sort of policy expertise or support so I can help you know, under um, global South countries, um, develop better policies that support women, but that are also very mindful of the role women play in the family. Um, and on top of that, like I want to live off of just writing grants. Yes. That's that's really what it is. Like I want to be able to make it a full time thing, um, help people start up their organizations, as well as like I said, do policies, mm -hmm. and maybe five years how old oh, i'll be 31 well i could probably still make it on the forbes 30 under 30 yeah, <laughs> well that that's a that's a goal of mine and to be able to give a ted talk to like mm -hmm. what her name was um sharon what sharon said to me like four years ago has really stuck right because um we all have something to say and it's important mm -hmm. and i think that like that's the space where I would love to be is a space where I can speak to different women. I can really just encourage people in a way they've never received that type of encouragement. So you may see me on your TV. Yes. You just you just never know, right? Yes. <laughs> but yeah, I think, yeah, overall, those are the main things to really take my organization global, have, have it in different countries and really help inform policies and legislations and really making sure that like we're protecting women. Didn't Tupac say something about... Yeah, like what how yeah, something like that. <laughs> okay, dope. So I expect world domination. Yes. Not in the evil kind. Not, not the weevil yeah, kind. Not the, like, the one that yeah, empowers <laughs> no, 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 Yeah, the yeah. Story. The one that empowers us to move right. forward so you know we can um, have better families, close the wealth gap mm -hmm. and just more information where information is needed. Yeah. 
so I, I I'm gonna play this back in five years and I hope to see it. I know I know I'm gonna see it um, before we leave just let everybody know where they can contact you and whether it's Instagram email phone number yeah so well first of all it was such a pleasure being here I wasn't even nervous y'all like I had a good time <laughs> it was worth the drive um, but you can reach me at honestly almost anywhere but I prefer my personal email which is kabisosojoel at gmail.com you could also reach me through my organization it's sisters and sync so you can find us at sistersandsync.org and not through Instagram please don't slide in my DMs that's so unprofessional oh please don't do that no, 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 you didn't. You sent me an email. Oh, yeah, you sent me, you sent me an email. You sent me an email. So And look where I am, you know? DMs, I'm not. But those are really the places where you could reach me. And it doesn't always have to be um, business. Like, I like to think I'm friendly enough where even if you just have a question, right? You don't necessarily have to already be on the process of applying for a grant. But if it's just wanting to know or even if it's like asking me where you can find a specific grant or if I think this is a good idea and if you should pursue something like I'm open to those types of conversations like I said like making money is great but sometimes someone just needs that little push and that's priceless you know really encouraging and motivating someone costs absolutely nothing so any questions grant related or how to operate a nonprofit, you can get me at that um, cabisoso joel at gmail or joel at sistersinsync.org okay yeah <laughs> dope dope well i want to thank you for coming because i feel like this is a well-needed episode because a lot of people have been asking oh where can i get grants this that and the third so when they see it i hope um your email is flooded after this all right well that was a great episode episode 21 black is a new rich podcast and we're out <laughs> Everything black on black. If I